Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ty Vincent again with another uh, LDI-based video, this time about psoriasis. There are more and more people suffering with psoriasis these days uh, because it's an autoimmune condition and pretty much every immune-related problem is going up and up and up. Uh, you might, if you watch regular TV, you might notice that you see ads on TV for some immune-suppressing drug that's being used specifically in psoriasis patients like every hour of television these days. So that's an indicator of the, the burden of disease that's out there. <clears throat> it's a very socially disabling problem for people because their skin can be so heavily involved that they're, they just don't feel comfortable wearing shorts or short sleeve shirts and they don't want anybody to see their skin. They're very self-conscious. It's, it's the, the psychological and social burden of this condition is, is huge if people have a significant case. And sometimes it's associated with arthritis. <clears throat> and the arthritis can be disabling and destructive to joints too. So it's not a small thing. It's not just itchy, flaky skin that people should just put some ointment on. <clears throat> it can be much, much worse. And that's why people are willing to take like life-threatening drugs in order to try to control it. You know, some of these injectable therapies have very high risk of nasty side effects. Not super, super high risk statistically, but even a 1% chance of dying from a life-threatening life infection is high if it's, a, if it's a drug to treat a skin condition, right? <clears throat> so I've been, I worked with psoriasis as an autoimmune disease ever since I started using LDI, low-dose immunotherapy, around 2009, 2010. And it, occur, it appeared to me that this should be something we should be able to treat, right? It's an autoimmune condition, widely accepted. And it's something visible. And, I, and it's really fun to treat skin conditions because you can see them. I don't have to rely upon somebody's report of how they feel about any particular symptom. This is something you can prove to me by sending me a photograph that we fixed it, right? That you have normal looking skin now. So it's a very satisfying thing to treat. I flailed about for a number of years trying to find different antigens that might work for it <clears throat> with no success. Or with limited success, I should say. Because uh, sometimes people would respond to foods. Every once in a while, I would encounter somebody with really horrible widespread plaque psoriasis and would give them the food mixture and their skin would just clear. Most of the time, people that have a food-associated skin condition have eczema or some permutation of that, but it can also look like psoriasis. Because once the immune system's involved, the immune system can do a variety of different things in, a, in response to the same antigen you know, in different people. So sometimes it would, be a, it would respond to foods... There's a certain subset of psoriasis called guttate psoriasis where you have smaller spotty little pots, spots of lesions here and there on the body, which is why it's called guttate, which means droplets. It looks like somebody splattered you with psoriasis. And they're less angry, usually more pink than red, and there's not as much scale. Um, they tend to occur on the face, uh, but also the body and other places. And so guttate psoriasis as a subcondition, uh, a subset within psoriasis, responds to strep. In almost every case, that, that's a streptococcus reaction, which has been described and known in the medical literature for a long time. So I had a hand, had a handful of psoriasis, uh, guttate psoriasis variety cases over the years that all responded to strep uh, so far. And that's easy to do too. <clears throat> but the bulk of people, 90% of people or more who have typical plaque psoriasis, these things didn't work for. And I tried things like skin scrapings or skin... Um, rubbings or, you know, collecting scale, even full thickness skin biopsies from a couple of psoriasis patients trying to see if an autologous LDI strategy would work because the existing antigens I had didn't. Uh, and, and that didn't work either. So I tried that for a couple of years. None of those people had any success. Then I started to think about <clears throat> what the disease looks like and how it behaves. And it looks like a fungal reaction, right? I mean, the, what happens with the skin is similar to athlete's foot or ringworm or something that just went out of control. So I tried the yeast mixture that I've had since 2009 and that didn't work. And that's because the types of fungi that live on the skin are not yeast. They're a different category. They're dermatophytic filamentous fungi, which may not mean anything to you, but they're very different, right? They're all fungi, but it's like a shrimp and an elephant are both animals, very different things. So what I did some research after that, several years back, maybe 2017, and put together a, a compilation of 30 different species of skin fungi, things that have been associated with one inflammatory skin condition or another uh, in different you know, literature and website research. And so I assembled this mixture that we call SFF, skin flora that's fungal. And that has worked miraculously well for most people with typical plaque psoriasis. Nothing seems to be 100%, but I would say it's 90% effective so far. 
And treating psoriasis with this has been very fun. Uh, like I said, because it's a very miserable, you know, somewhat debilitating condition in some of, in some of you that have it. And so this mixture works the vast majority of the time. And it has a narrow dose effective range too. So it doesn't take very long to either find the effective dose or decide that it's not going to work. So you don't have to invest a year of messing around with this like we do with some other conditions where <clears throat> there are lots of possible antigens and the dose ranges are really broad. Some things take me a couple of years to, to finally determine that LDI doesn't work for that person. But with psoriasis, you find out quickly, is this going to work or is it not? And the vast majority of the time it does. So there's hope uh, in this arena for those of you out there suffering with psoriasis or if you know someone suffering with psoriasis, it's something to look into. If you're not familiar with LDI, we have other videos on low-dose immunotherapy describing the treatment and how it works and a lot of other kind of basic concepts behind the therapy. So if you know someone who has psoriasis and you want to recommend they try this, just tell them to watch the other videos. People should educate themselves um, and gain some awareness and understanding of what it's all about before they talk to me. Uh, they get way ahead of the game in terms of their knowledge and understanding, ask better questions, and they come into it with a certain amount of confidence that they know that this might work for them. So that's my usual suggestion to people if you're looking to refer a friend or a loved one uh, for LDIs. Tell them to do their homework first. There's no commitment. There's no interaction. There's no money. It's just education. And hopefully it benefits uh, somebody out there that you care about. Thanks.